Hey guys, this is Sarah Condon back on Rhythms of Grace. I'm so excited. This is only um, my second time to be with you guys, and um, so I'm still super nervous. So, but I'm excited. So this morning I wanted to talk about something that has been on my heart a lot, something that I've been kind of talking about a lot in different spheres of my life. And that is um, the words from Naomi that we get in the book of Ruth. So um, I'm just going to read this to you. So this is from uh, the book of Ruth chapter one and we're here at verse um 19 and if you don't know this story so this is a point at which ruth and naomi have um ruth and naomi and oh my word the name's gonna escape me because i'm so nervous orpa um are a family uh of sorts so uh naomi has two sons and ruth and orpa married them and they both died and um, Naomi's husband died, and so we find Naomi at this point of just complete sadness and brokenness, and um, Ruth uh, has promised to stay with her. Orpah has left. Ruth has promised to stay with her, which is why we get this book named after Ruth, which is wonderful, and we love Ruth, but there are moments that I wish it was named for Naomi because she's equally as powerful So, um, in her weakness, right? So, um, so the two of them meaning Ruth and Naomi, went on until they came to Bethlehem. This is Ruth 19. And when they came to Bethlehem, the whole town was stirred because of them. And the women said, is this Naomi? She said to them, do not call me Naomi, call me Mara. For the Almighty, capital A Almighty, has dealt very bitterly with me. I went away full and the Lord has brought me back empty. Why call me Naomi when the Lord has testified against me and the Almighty has brought calamity upon me? Oh, my word. Right. It's so it's so deeply sad. Um, I've used this uh, passage. We've studied, I've studied this book and a lot of um, the Bible studies that I've led with women. And there's a question that always comes up that is that fascinates me. And that is that people in the room will often say, I can't believe that, um, that she didn't lose her faith in God. And that Naomi didn't just say, you know, I don't believe in God, right? I'm an atheist now or whatever. And I'm always fascinated by this question. And I think it's a good question, an honest question, but it's a very modern question to me, um, right? It's a, it's a question that, that we ask because it's a thing people do now, right? That we say, you know, if our lives go really poorly, we say, well, God doesn't exist. I renounce God. I'm an atheist or whatever. Um, and, and there's some reasons we do this. And I would say one of the big ones is um, we have alternatives or so it seems, right? So these days we can invest ourselves in an exercise program that, you know, gives you a community and gives you specific foods to eat and gives you rules to follow and gives you some sense of control in your life, right? And if it feels like God's not controlling it well, then maybe this will. Or we can throw ourselves into our work and we can try to become more and more successful. Or um, there was another thing. Oh, just sort of promoting your own self-image, right? Like that's a thing we feel like we can have control over. And I just want to be really clear. These are all God's. When we do this in our lives, when we say, well, I'm going to renounce God because he's not doing a good job, but I'm going to start exercising. We've made, we've made a God of that. That's what's happening. We're trying to feel some sense of ground underneath us. And while um, I have certainly probably done that in my own life in certain ways, I'm not sure I haven't ever renounced God, but I'm sure I have thought God's not doing the job. Maybe I can pour my heart and soul into this and it'll work. Um, I understand the impulse. It, it never works. It just doesn't. It, all, it always falls short. We always find ourselves broken by it. Um, we cannot land ourselves in the, in the promises of our own, gosh, in our own ability to do things, right? I mean, the passage, I always remind myself, the passage is not, I can do, sorry, yes, I'll get this. 
Boom, going off. The passage is not, I can do all things through Sarah who strengthens me, right? I often act like it is, but it's not. It's Jesus, you know. I think that's a really common impulse. The other thing I want to say about this that I think is very modern, um, and I may step on some toes, and um, that is my way, so I would apologize, but it is what I do, um, is that in a lot of times when we talk about um, something other than God these days, we talk about the universe, right? There's a lot of universe language we hear, like, oh, well, you know, I'm just going to give this over to the universe, or like, I'm going to ask the universe to bring this back to me, and the universe this, the universe that, and I just, I want to remind everybody what the universe is, because I made the mistake one time of saying in front of a friend of mine who's a believer, I said, you know, the universe is a mean place, and he said to me, it's worse than that. The universe doesn't even care. Um, I know we often will say it's okay to use other, you know, names for God. And maybe when people say universe, they mean God. Okay, fine. But what I would say about that is it is important for us to use the very specific name of God. It is important for us to, as our sister Naomi did, to call on the Almighty because God calls on us. God calls us by name. God has a very specific name for us. God speaks love over us in our, in our greatest moments of need in a very specific way. And so I would encourage you to use the name of God and to call on the Almighty like Naomi did. Um, because I think what Naomi does in this passage, while it is painful to read, is so familiar to us that we're going through our lives. We don't know what's going to happen. I mean, it's the morning time here in Houston. I don't know what's going to happen this afternoon. I mean, funeral, you know, date night, cancer diagnosis. I have no idea, right? And I think what Naomi does is actually so faithful. And we shouldn't judge her. We should, like, applaud her for this. She basically looks up at the sky at God and says, what is going on? <laughs> what are you doing, Lord? You know what I mean? Like, I feel like I've been marked here. Like, this is not going well for me. And I, I think that's a very faithful, honest response we should all think about when we're in the midst of really heavy stuff. So call on the name of the Lord specifically. I, I, I want to encourage that. And I want to close uh, with a little story, something that happened in our own family about a week ago, we, uh, so we're in Houston, Texas, so I'm, I always am at the pool with my children because it is hot, hot, hot. And I was at the pool, and I have a four-year-old little girl, and she is not a very good swimmer. And we were on, uh, she was on a float, which of course, floats are important when you're not a good swimmer. She's on the float, and she fell off of the float. And as she was falling off of the float, I'm not kidding, she goes, Jesus! And... I knew immediately she'd heard me say it because my husband does not have a Southern accent. And so I took a minute as a parent, as a Christian parent, and I thought, okay, I mean, I can literally throw the book at my four-year-old right now, right? I can tell her, you know, I can list off the commandment and I can talk about taking the Lord's name in vain. We can do this right here in the shallow end of a pool in Houston, Texas, you know? Or I can tell her the honest truth that I tell myself. And so I looked at my daughter and I said, that's right, honey, you call on the name of Jesus in your moment of need. And I think that's what we see Naomi doing. And I think that's what God encourages us to do in our own walks of faith is to call upon his name. To say, I don't know what's happening right now, Lord. This is hard and awful. And please help me because you know, the truth of the matter with my daughter in the pool was that is the first float of many in her life that she is going to find herself falling off of and find herself longing for the name of Jesus. So, um, you know, read the book of Ruth again. It's short and it's so beautiful, even just the first chapter. And, um, and I, I, I hope you can give God thanks for our sister, Naomi, because I certainly do. I hope you all have a wonderful day, and I'm so glad to be with you all. Thanks.